Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Perfumery Basics and in today's video I'm going to show you how to tune two very basic chords or sometimes otherwise known as notes uh, that's used commonly in perfumery. So with these two accords that we're going to build, uh, my rule of thumb is when I build an accord is to keep it simple. You don't want to put in too much because the more you put in, then what's going to happen is you're going to actually build more than just an accord. It's going to start looking like it's its own formula for a full on perfume. So when I build an accord or a note, I try to keep it down to its basic minimum uh, requirements or necessities and then just kind of slowly tweak it just a little bit. But I don't want to add in too much because if you add in too much of something in a particular accord, it kind of limits what you can do with it in your perfume. So when I build an accord, I like a kind of like, I call them drag and drop accords, where I can just take this accord and put it into any style of perfume that I want to use and then further tweak it later down the road if need be. So I keep it very minimalistic. Okay, so the first accord that we're gonna look at today is your basic rose accord. And I think this is one of the accords that everyone in perfumery when they're starting off needs to learn how to make. Yes, you can always buy rose absolutes, rose essential oils, um, you can get uh, you know, Rose Jivco by Jivodan, which is their own ro uh, Rose Accord. But it's always nice to know uh, how to build your own accords and kind of it breaks it down so you understand how they work, how they function, what are the main components. So let's take a look at building a Rose Accord. So a Rose Accord, the three main ingredients or the three main materials you're gonna need in any Rose Accord, you're gonna need your phenyl ethyl alcohol, Sometimes they call it PEA for short. You're gonna need your citronellol, and that's citronellol with an O on the end, not an A. Don't confuse the two. And then you're gonna need geraniol. So these three main materials pretty much composes the majority of a rose accord. So with these three, you're gonna start with getting these three in balance. So to start your accord, what I like to do is start off with a higher concentrate of PEA followed by a little bit less citronellol and then just a little bit less geraniol. So this one kind of mimics, I would say more of like a rose absolute. Most rose absolutes are higher concentrates of PEA versus the other two materials. Now, if you were to actually take or smell a real rose, like in a garden, it might actually smell more citronellol than PEA. So rose is kind of all over the place in terms of scent. Every rose is different if you're doing a red rose, a white rose, a pink one, a purple one. And it also depends on where you're getting your rose from. If it's from the USA, from France, from Morocco, wherever. They're all a little bit different. But this one, we're gonna focus on a PEA forward uh, rose accord. So start off with your formula in parts of 1000. So if you've looked at my other uh, perfumery uh, uh, videos, I usually do parts per thousand. You could do parts per 100, but all formulas need to equal or equate at the very end, equal 100 or 1000. I choose 1000 because it shows more of the trace materials that you can use. Uh, if you use into parts of 100, sometimes trace mis uh, materials don't really show up. They just show up as blank. So 1000 is what I like to use. So start off with your PEA citronella and ger geraniol as PEA at 444, citronella at 333, and geraniol at 222. So these three right here will all equal 1000 in your formula. And this is your basic core rows. But now we're gonna tweak it. And this is where it's gonna get fun and you can kind of add a little bit more complexity, a little bit more depth to it. So I'm going to add in just a smidget of eugenol to this and a little bit of nerol, uh, some desmacone beta, and a little bit of violet leaf absolute and then we're going to add in a wild card uh, which is called rosaran super and i'll explain all these later so now once you add in your eugenol all your other you know near all desmacone beta so now we're going to look at the formula like this so your pea is now at 422 citronellol is at 317 geraniol is at 211 and you're gonna add in small doses of eugenol, which is now at your formula at uh, 21. 
And what eugenol does is adds a little bit of clove kind of spiciness to it. So this is gonna spice up the rose just a hair. But you'll notice that 21 parts per thousand is not a lot. So it's not gonna be overpowering, but it's just there to notice a smidget of spiciness. Then we're gonna add in some Nerol at uh, 14 parts per 1,000. And Nerol is kind of like a more bright, lively, almost a citrusy kind of floral. Uh, Nerol is found naturally in a lot of things from lemons uh, to orange blossom and things like that. And this is gonna kind of give your rose just a little bit more brightness, a little bit more liveliness, but not a lot, because we don't wanna use too much where it becomes a noticeable scent. You wanna just add just in enough just to give it just a little bit of brightness without it actually becoming the scent itself. And then underneath that for Dasmicone Beta, uh, we're gonna do eight parts 1000. Dasmicone Beta is very, very strong, so be careful with this one. You can go a little bit higher if you want, but I like it right around in this region. Dasmicone Beta, kind of is like this, I don't wanna call it a red fruit, but it does give this appearance of redness to the rose. It makes this rose smell kind of more fruity, jammy, red, kind of velvety. And this is like, when added in smaller trace amounts, this adds a real nice touch. And then if you want to add in a smidget of greenness to kind of emulate the leaves on the rose, I chose Violet Leaf Absolute. And we're gonna put in, now we're getting into trace amount materials. We're gonna do four parts per thousand. And then the last thing is the wild card. So I like to add Rosarin or Rosarin Super. So this is a very, very strong material. So you're gonna wanna use this diluted. And the smell that this gives off is a very, very bright, sharp, metallic kind of rose. It is, it almost acts like an aldehyde. So this is why I say dose it real low, keep it at two parts per 1000. So you don't want this dominating the scent because if you put in too much, you're gonna get this very sharp metallic rose which you really don't want in this accord. You just wanna add in trace amounts just to give it a little sparkle, just to get it a little bit of lift. So looking at the list here, so we've got our PEA, Citronella, Geraniol, Eugenol for a little spice, Nerol for a little bit of freshness, Desmicone Beta to give it a little more fruity red vibe, and then Violet Leaf Absolute to give it some green leaf, and then Roseran Super to give it just a little sparkle, just a, bit, a little bit of lift. So this next accord is another favorite of mine. Uh, this is gonna be your red amber. And what I mean by red amber is not to confuse amber with like ambergris, uh, which is more of like a blue whale vomit kind of scent. Uh, this is a, a red amber, which is more associated with like oriental accords very balsamic, very warm, inviting, sensual, syrupy, kind of spicy. So this is your classic take on a red amber. So with the red amber, you're gonna start with the three main ingredients that bring up the core of this, uh, of this accord. So benzoin, labdanum, and vanillin are the three main ingredients that make up a red amber accord. And you can get by with a red amber accord just by using these three, but we're gonna take it a step further. So with these three ingredients, uh, again, with your formula equaling parts of 1,000, we're gonna start with benzoin at 667, labdanum at 222, vanillin at 111. So this is primarily a benzoin heavy base. But now we're gonna add in some things to really liven it up, to really spice it up, uh, to give it a little bit more depth and uh, a little bit more, I guess you can say manly, uh, manliness to this accord. So now we're going to introduce in some balsam oil. This is just a basic balsam essential oil. You can get this anywhere. And we're gonna add in parts of uh, 277, uh, parts of the 1000 formula. Now balsam oil, again, it's going to warm it up. It's gonna make it very balsamic. It's gonna to tone down that sweetness that the vanilla and the benzoin was introduced in the core accord. The next one you're gonna to wanna to add is Styrax. Now Styrax, we're gonna put in parts of 55 out of 1000. And Styrax is more of, it's a very, very deep, kind of, I don't wanna say smoky, but it has leathery facets, kind of animalic, 
uh, maybe a little dirty smelling. And this is what kind of mans up this accord a little bit. It gives it a, a lot of depth to it. And now it's really starting to go from a sweet benzoin red amber base and it's now becoming a little bit more complex. Now you can add in some musk. Uh, the musk I kind of keep low. Usually this Accord formula is only going to be about 10% is going to be musk. Uh, so 100 out of 1,000 parts uh, is going to be our musk. And I chose to do uh, use Exaltolide Total, which is kind of more of a darker, more sensual, more skin-like kind of musk. Uh, you can choose any musk here. You can go with Galaxolide if you want to keep it clean. You can use Ethylene Brassolate. You can use... Uh, Amber seeds, whichever you want, but I chose Exaltolite Total for this musk. And I also wanted to keep it low, uh, 100 parts per thousand, because if you put in too much musk into an accord, again, you're gonna start building an accord out into its own perfume. Because when I keep my musk low in an accord, that means now when I use this in accord in any perfume formula, the the musk doesn't dictate you know or doesn't restrict me i can still add in other musk if i want to musk it up some more so i keep this musk in this particular formula at 100 parts per thousand so i can have more control later in the perfume the next one we're going to add in is some cinnamon leaf oil you can i mean some people use cinnamon bark uh, i chose to do cinnamon leaf because it has a more dirtier kind of clovey yet still cinnamon vibe and this is what's going to give it a little bit of spiciness so in this one though i'm going to keep it real low because this can be strong so 13 parts per thousand in this formula and then the last one we're going to add in is some sort of wood you need a woody backbone to this but again kind of like the musk i want to keep this kind of low because i don't want the wood to paint me into a corner when I'm using this Accord in a full perfume formula. I want to still be able to use other woods in the perfume. So here you're going to keep your wood at 55 parts per thousand. So it's going to still give you a nice woody kind of backbone to, uh, backbone to this Accord, but not over dominate this Accord with a woody scent. So in this particular one, I chose patchouli because patchouli goes again with that kind of slightly dirty, slightly earthy kind of theme that I'm going for for this balsamic red amber. Now, if it's too dirty for you, feel free to substitute it with something else. Go ahead and use a classic cedar wood. Uh, if you're feeling daring, use oud. Uh, you can use something, if you wanna use patchouli, but a cleaner one, you could use Ferminch makes a clear wood, which is a clean patchouli. But uh, the overall thing here is keep your wood a little bit lower, 55 parts per thousand. So now looking at this whole formula here, we took a core benzoin, labdomen, and vanilla, slightly sweet red amber base and kind of built upon it and kind of dirtied it up, uh, gave it a little bit more depth, uh, a little bit more backbone to it. Okay, so that was it. It was just basically two very simple, easy accords that you can do at home. Uh, again, each of the two accords that I showed you has the three main components uh, per accord, and then we added in four or five little kind of tucked in some subtle things here and there just to give it a little bit more depth. A lot of these things that we tucked in in small amounts, you can omit if you want. Feel free to tweak these accords to your liking, but these are the two that I like to use and dabble with here. And I thought I'd just share them here for you guys to try at home. Uh, and then feel free to experiment and uh, twist them into any direction that you like. So uh, if you like these accords, if you find that uh, you're using them and you're kind of tweaking them and adding maybe different components, feel free to comment below. Let everyone know how you're tweaking these accords and seeing what works and what doesn't work for you in your blends. So with that being said, until next time.